Hi everyone, this is Sherry from Planning Peep and welcome back to my channel. Today I will be filming my hand lettering and brush lettering video, which is probably my most requested video of all time. So I'm super excited to be filming this. I'm sorry it took me so long, um, but I just kind of had a sudden burst of inspiration the other day and um, I started jotting down some things that I wanted to share with you guys in this video. Before we jump in, I do want to just mention as a disclaimer that I am not a professional at hand lettering or brush lettering in any way. Um, it's just something that I do for fun, usually in my planner and sometimes my journal um, and just something I've kind of like mostly learned on my own. So I don't know if like the techniques that I'm using are um, accurate or correct in any way, but they're just things that I kind of observed and picked up. Um, I have taken a class before with Love Shira, who I think is like the queen of hand lettering. Um, so I did learn some brush lettering techniques from her, which was really helpful because that's that was around the time that I started dabbling into brush lettering. So um, that was the one class I did take and everything else I pretty much just like like learned through watching Instagram videos of people who um, do lettering really well um, and I would just like watch their videos on repeat and practice the same words that they wrote over and over so I will be sharing some of those accounts with you guys so you guys can check that out as well because that really helped me when I was learning I'm gonna link that in the description box down below um, and for this video my general idea is to split it into three parts because for me when I learned to do hand lettering and the brush lettering it really consisted of like three kind of separate skills. So the first part is just going to be letter formation, how to actually form the letters when hand lettering, because it's a little bit different from cursive. And then the second section will be um, faux hand lettering. So lettering by using just a regular pen rather than like a brush pen. And then the third part will go into brush lettering. So I feel like for me, that was kind of the natural progression of things. So that's kind of what I want to share with you guys. I also just want to mention that this is something I'm constantly still learning and practicing and getting better at again I'm not an expert or professional in this so I'm still like always learning myself and honestly the key to getting better at it is just to practice 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 and I know it sounds super cliche but um, it really really does help to just feel more comfortable with the way that the letters are formed and using the brush pen and things like that it will go a long way I promise so um, anyways, um, that's just some of the things I wanted to mention. And let's go ahead and jump right into our letter formation section. I wanted to start with letter formation as the first chapter because I truly feel like this is the basis for hand lettering. And generally, most of the letters are formed pretty similarly to how we learned them back in school when we learned cursive, but there are a few letters that are different. And I don't think it's a rule that you have to write it in this different way. It's just something that I've observed. Um, most people who do calligraphy and hand lettering tend to form their letters this way. So I just wanted to share some of these things with you guys. Right now, I'm just starting by writing all the letters of the alphabet and there are some letters that have a couple different variations for how you want to form it or where to put like a little loop so I did do all of the variations for those letters as you can see the D um, there are two different ways that I've seen D's being written and both of them look really pretty and then for the letter S um, I have three different ways that I'll write it um, so I went ahead and did all of those for you guys as well and again this is just something that can be a personal preference or you can even switch back and forth between how you want to write it and then for the V and the W the only difference between those two variations is where you put the loop so sometimes I'll put the loop in the front and other times I'll put it at the end or sometimes I won't put a loop at all again this is totally something that is a personal preference so you can do whatever you like um, so now that I've shown the basics for how to write each of the letters I want to focus on the letters that are different from regular cursive these are the ones that I needed some extra practice because I was so used to writing cursive in the way that was taught. So I really had to take some time to um, relearn how to form these letters. The first letter that's different is B, and this might be one of my favorite letters to write because I just think it looks so pretty. Um, I love adding that little loop at the bottom, but that is totally optional. The next letter is D, and again, there are two variations. Um, the second one looks really pretty when you have the loop at the top, but sometimes it if you're writing a word that already has quite a lot of loops, you might want to um, not use that style just to not make it look so busy or crowded. 
The F is pretty much the same, except for me, I like to, again, add a little loop um, in that center part. And the H is pretty similar to cursive, but the one thing I do recommend is leaving some space between where that left line is coming down and where you start forming like the little hump of the H. I don't know if that makes sense. I'm not sure how to explain these things, but I've noticed that leaving a little gap in between makes it look more like calligraphy. And then the L, the only thing that's different about the L is that I like to curve the letter a little bit to the right. Um, I don't know if you noticed that, but that is very intentional. That is also something that I noticed a lot of people who write in calligraphy will do. Um, for the M, I have two variations. The first one's pretty basic. It just looks like a regular M, but the second one I added a little loop to the front, and I use that sometimes when the word starts with M. I don't tend to do it if M is in the middle of the word. And I do want to note that M and N are the letters that I struggle with the most. Um, a lot of people who hand letter have like really, really cute and really pretty ways that they write M's. And for some reason, mine just don't come out looking like that. So those are the ones that I definitely still need to practice. For the P, as you can see, I just add a little loop um, at the bottom. And then for Q, also um, the only addition is that little optional loop. I just wanted to show you guys how I write it in case you would like to add that as well. The R is another letter that is different and I think is one of the prettiest parts of hand lettering. The only difference from regular cursive is that you add a little loop to the front, but for some reason that little change makes such a big difference. And sometimes you can change the size of the loop so you can make like a really big loop at the front um, to kind of add a little different style, um, but that's something that you can play around with. Like I said earlier, S, I do have three different uh, variations that I like to use. The first one is the one I use the most often, but at times I will switch it up. The V and the W I explained earlier, I do like to add a little loop um, to the front or to the back of the letter, and where I add the loop depends on the other letters around it. So if the letter in front of it already is quite loopy, then I'll add it to the end, or if the letter after it is quite loopy, then I'll put it at the beginning. So um, it just kind of depends on where it is in the word and what other letters are around it. Now that we've gone through the individual letters, I want to now put the letters together to form words. And my biggest tip for just writing words with hand lettering techniques is to pause or take a break after every single letter. I know that is completely counteractive to the entire point of cursive, but what I've noticed with hand lettering is that um, it comes out looking the best when you take a break in between and start your letter at another spot from where you ended it. So again, it's very different from how cursive is typically written. So the first word I'm writing is hello, and this is actually the word that I practiced most often and is always the word that I use when I test out new brush pens and things like that. And I do suggest kind of starting by picking a word that you like and just kind of like work on practicing that over and over. The other word I practice a lot is my name, obviously, because I wanted it to look nice when I sign cards and things like that. As you can see, I lift up my pen quite a bit, sometimes not just at the end of the letter, like for example, the H in my name. Um, I do take a pause after I um, bring down like the long part on the side. I like to lift it up so that I can kind of start the next part fresh and have each thing be like its own element. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but I do think that's a really key part of hand lettering. And that took me a while to get used to because again, it's so different from cursive where everything is written, you know, all in one stroke. So practice just lifting up your pen after every stroke or every um, letter so that you can start fresh and reform the next one separately. Now I'm just moving on to writing some different phrases that I would say I letter the most often. So happy birthday, of course, um, is something that I always like to write in hand lettering whenever I write somebody a card. Um, so that is one that gets a lot of practice. And then welcome is also used quite a lot because I made a couple signs for my friends for a baby shower, for a wedding, and welcome is always one of the words that is included. So as you can see, the W for welcome, I do like to put the loop at the beginning because um, E is the next letter and it's pretty loopy. So I don't want two loops that are right next to each other because it could look really crowded. Um, so that's what I mean when I said that where you place the loop kind of depends on what's around it. Those are some of the things that I take into consideration. 
I decided to write Valentine's Day because I remember when I was planning um, and I wrote it into my planner, I really like how it turned out, but I did have some trouble writing day um, with the D written in like the second variation. I don't write that as often, so it's definitely something that um, I'm not as comfortable with. As you can see, I um, didn't like how it came out twice. So again, this whole process is just about continuing to practice and um, forming the letters how you like it. I'm just writing a couple other phrases, Merry Christmas and Be Kind, just so you can see a few more examples of how I form the letters on its own before we move into faux hand lettering. Moving on to chapter two, this section is all about faux lettering, which I'm not 100% sure is the correct terminology, but it's basically creating the look of using a brush pen without actually having to use a brush pen. So with this method, you can use any pen or pencil or marker um, and create this look of calligraphy without actually using a pen that might be a little bit harder to control. So the way that faux lettering works, um, pretty much the basis for how you create the look is um, understanding the difference between an upstroke and a downstroke. So an upstroke is any time that your pen moves in the direction of going upwards. And I just kind of did a few example strokes. It can kind of lean to the right or the left, but basically the general direction of your pen is going up. And a downstroke is any time your pen is going the direction of going down. So again, I did some examples. It can be vertical. It can kind of curve to the right or to the left, but anytime your pen is going downwards, that is what is considered a downstroke. So once you understand the difference between those, the key to faux lettering is to bold the downstrokes. So basically, every time that your pen moves down, you're going to make that part of the letter bold by um, just kind of like shading around it and creating um, like just a little bolder look on that side. So now what I'm doing is I'm writing out the entire alphabet again and bolding the downstrokes of every letter and also um, noting with arrows how or where the downstrokes are. And I'm not sure if this is helpful or if it's just a little too busy, but for me, this was something that helped me learn it. And if it is helpful for you, you can always take a screenshot um, at the end when I'm done. I kind of pause for a few seconds so that you can um, just have this as a reference when you're working on your faux lettering. The only exception is the X because the X has two downstrokes, um, but I don't want to bold the entire letter, so I like to leave the second stroke unbolded. Now that you know where to bold every letter, let's move on to combining the letters into words. Like I mentioned earlier, I love starting with the word hello. That's always my first go-to. So I'm writing it a couple times for you to see. And as you can see, I did not like some of the times that I wrote it. So I just scratched it off. It's not a perfect science and that's okay. And um, I'm just rewriting some of the phrases that I had written on the other side, um, but showing you how to do how to bold the downstrokes. Typically, I like to write the entire word first and then go back and bold the entire word rather than doing it one letter at a time. I think this is a lot more efficient and it allows you to see the word as a whole.
I'm varying the size of my writing to show you guys that it works for um, larger writing as well. And then I'm also pulling out a different pen. It's the Tombow dual tipped pen. And I'm using the marker side to show you guys some variations of pens that you can use when you um, choose to faux letter. Now that you know how to faux letter, the next section is brush lettering. So the difference between faux lettering and brush lettering is that with brush lettering, you're actually using a brush pen. I'm gonna really quickly show you guys some of my favorite brush pens. So the first one is the Tombow Fudenosuke. This one works really, really well. The second one is the Pilot brush lettering pen. And then I have a series of the Zebra brush pens as well. Those I got from Daiso and they were only $1.50 each. So they're very affordable. And the last one I have is the Tombow dual pen that I had used earlier. Um, earlier I used the marker side and for this one I'm going to use the brush pen side. The key to brush lettering is very similar to faux lettering, which is why I think it's kind of a natural progression to start from the faux lettering and then move into brush lettering. Um, for the downstrokes where you bolded earlier by coloring in, with brush lettering you bold the downstrokes by pushing a little harder on your pen so that it creates a more bold stroke. And then when you're making an upstroke, you just um, lift up your pen a little bit and don't press as hard so that it creates a thinner stroke. And it's easier to start by just doing single lines so that you get used to putting more pressure as you go down um, but one of the best practices there is is this little squiggly that you just saw me draw so this is one of the basic practices that I've seen for brush lettering and you just make these little squiggles and practice going from pushing down hard for the downstrokes to lifting up and going lightly for the upstrokes and you just kind of go over and over so that you get used to the feel of when to push and when to lift up a little bit. I did film this quite a long time ago, so I don't remember why I wrote A, B, C, D on the side. I think maybe I was showing you that you can practice with regular print as well, but it really doesn't come out looking like lettering. So just ignore that for now. Now I'm going back to the pens that I showed you earlier and giving you a sample of what each of them look like. So if you would like to purchase one to try, you can choose one that you like the most. And I kind of did it from the thinnest to the thickest. Um, I think the Pilot and the Zebra Thin are pretty similar in thickness. The Tombow Fudenosuke is a little bit bigger so sometimes I do find it hard to write with that pen in my planner because it takes up a lot of space. And then the thickest largest pen is the Tombow Dual. So that one is definitely better for um, if you're writing a poster or a card, something that isn't in a small space like a planner. Now I'm using the different pens to write some phrases and some quotes um, that you can use as well to practice. Another tip that I have for practicing hand lettering is to watch a video of somebody writing a word or a phrase and just writing that exact same thing over and over so that you can practice um, perfecting that one word or one phrase. I know it sounds really tedious, but for me that was really huge in helping me improve because I got to see exactly how other people wrote the letter, you know, where they were pushing and how they spaced it out so that I could replicate that exactly. And I think eventually your own creativity and your own style will come through um, once you get a little bit more comfortable with how to hand letter. But at the beginning for me, it was just really helpful to copy other people's work first so that I could practice and get used to it. And then the creative part came later. Another thing that I do sometimes when lettering quotes is to switch up the pen and or the font that you use. So I think lettering can sometimes look really overwhelming or really crowded when there's like a lot of it in a small space. So to prevent that from happening, I think it helps to use like a different font, whether you use all uppercase letters or lowercase or even just a different pen for um, some thinner lettering, you know, whatever it is, it just kind of helps break up that um, intensity of the writing. As you can see here, I tried to combine upper and lowercase letters and I really did not like how that turned out. So, you know, it's just a trial and error to see what you like or what you don't like. Sometimes when I'm lettering in my journal, I actually practice on another piece of paper first to figure out how I want to space things or what font I want to use because those little things can make a big difference. Another thing about brush lettering, which is something I'm constantly still working on, is varying the height of the letters and where the letters sit. So I drew a line with pencil just so you can see where the middle line is. And um, sometimes it looks really nice and I've seen a lot of other calligraphers do this, but 
they um, put some of the letters above the line and some of the letters below the line. But again, this is something I have a really hard time with. I tend to kind of write everything on an even line, so it's really hard for me to like vary that. And as you can see, I try to write hello with like up and down, and I did not like that at all. It looks really, really strange. So I just want you guys to know that that's something you can do as well. But for me, that's not something I'm good at yet, so I don't have a whole lot of advice for that. So anyways, that is it for the brush lettering section. Um, the last thing I want to share with you guys before I end this video is just my top three pieces of advice and my first piece of advice is to slow down when you're writing um, even if you already know how to form the letter I feel like there's always a difference when you slow down and actually take time to form each letter individually my second advice is to practice, practice, practice. And I obviously can't say that enough because I think I've repeated this like 10 times already, but honestly, this is the biggest thing that has helped me grow in my lettering. My next piece of advice is something I'm still working on as well, and that is to be kind to yourself. I know it's really easy to start comparing your work to those of other people because I totally catch myself doing that as well, but just remember to be kind to yourself. Give yourself grace when you're learning this and when you're practicing. It's not always going to look perfect. As you saw earlier, I had things I crossed out because I didn't like how it came out, um, but that's okay. You just kind of learn from your mistakes or find ways that you want to improve and develop your own style, and I promise it will all turn out okay. And I have a bonus piece of advice, and that is to have fun. Um, I don't think hand lettering should be something that's super serious. You, know, you should do it for yourself because you enjoy it, because you want to be able to make your cards look nice or whatever it is, um, but just have fun with the process. And that is it for my hand lettering tutorial, you guys. I'm so excited to finally be uploading this. You have no idea. I've been planning this for like years. So I'm really excited. I hope you guys um, enjoy this. I hope you guys have fun practicing your lettering as well um, feel free to tag me or send me messages on instagram my account name is the same as my youtube it's planning peep just because i would love to see how you guys are doing with your lettering if you found this helpful so yeah thank you so so much for watching and i will talk to you guys next time bye